Hello and welcome. Uh, welcome to this new episode uh, where we bring our faculty members and then folks who have published high impact papers. So we'd like to welcome uh, you, Dr. Chamarti. Thanks for being here today. Thank you, Dr. Kashyap. Dr. Chamarti is a pediatrician and a diplomat of American Board of Obesity Medicine. And she is a lead author of a recent uh, journal of obesity pillars, uh, a paper exploring the impact of ultra processed food uh, on pediatric health. Dr. Chamarti, very many congratulations on behalf of uh, us as well as our audience to, for this important publication. Uh, before we dive in, I was, I was wondering for our audience and viewers, if you can tell a little bit about your background uh, and then what inspired your passion in pediatric obesity medicine. Yes, for sure. Um, I have uh, been a pediatrician for almost 15 years and I found my niche in obesity medicine about a couple of years ago when AAP came up with this 2023 new AAP guidelines and then I got certified in obesity medicine last year. Um, I'm also chairman of American Academy of Pediatrics, Chapter 1, Childhood Nutrition and Obesity Prevention Committee. And I also serve as editor-in-chief for Statwell's um, Obesity Medicine and Pediatrics. My focus has always been on helping families approach obesity and nutrition without a stigma. And I began noticing how ultra-processed foods dominate children's diet, even from toddlerhood and infancy. Um, seeing this firsthand, I wanted to bridge the gap of science, prevention, and practical care, and that led me to this paper. Wow, your hands are full, and, and it's commendable that you are adding to the adding to the cause and helping the communities as well. So let me start with the why. Um, you know, why did you feel this was the right time to take on this topic of ultra-processed foods? Yes. So children, today's generation, get nearly 70% of their calories daily from ultra-processed food. Yet most pediatric guidelines still focus on the macronutrition and not really at the process level. So we saw the need to synthesize the emerging global evidence linking ultra-processed food to chronic disease risk in children. The goal is to highlight this is a modifiable risk factor and create practical guidance for pediatric providers. Um, our aim is to translate research into tools pediatricians can use in everyday practice. Fantastic. I understand that this is not a clinical trial and study. You put a review article and, and there's a lot of, uh, I, I went through the article and then there's a lot of uh, information like infographics listed there as well. Um, let me understand our, our, our audience, especially if they are not in medicine, what is driving families and or children towards them? Why this ultra processed foods are so pervasive? Yes. So the important factor here is the affordability and convenience with the busy lives and, and ultra processed foods are often cheaper and shelf stable and easy for busy parents. And secondly, it's the food insecurity. UPFs fill hunger but lack nutrients, and families that have limited options or financial constraints uh, opt towards ultra-processed food. And then is the marketing influence. The digital ads and the pictures on these ultra-processed foods are very attractive to the young kids. And my own kids, when I go grocery shopping, they want that with a bluey picture on it or you know, like a cartoon on it, but they don't know what is inside the box, right? And the school environments and the culture, uh, the acculturization is shifting towards the packaged foods. So it's not just nutrition, it's the social determinants and equity in the access to real food. That is so true. And especially marketing is not helping because marketing helps you sell whatever it needs to be sell. And it's becoming more and more attractive. So, you know, our kids or parents might want a stuff which is more marketed. This is like bright colors and things like that is definitely not helping. Uh, I think let's take the theory and part into it and let's bring it to the practice. Uh, what are some actionable, realistic steps, uh, pediatricians, the family physicians, the clinicians, and, and families uh, can take uh, to fight fight this, uh, this issue? Yes, so the importantly for clinicians, um, incorporating ultra-processed food and 
uh, sugary beverage screening in every visit, whether it's a physical visit or a sick visit, and also usually using visual teaching tools like my plate models, sugar bottles, or healthy swap posters or five to one world posters will help. And also avoiding generic advices like eat less um, and, and work out more or do more exercise. Instead, what I practice is a personalized nutritional counseling. I, I sit with the family, with the child and the family and ask them what is the most common um, ultra processed food that they consume. For example, a 14 year old may be drinking like a soda every day. Then we come up with a goal with a, a small individual goal. Let's cut down the soda Monday to Saturday and Sunday is your cheat day where you get to drink the soda. We'll follow up in a month and then we'll go over a second goal. So let's not um, focus only on the patient, but also talk to the parent. And it should be a family-centered approach. And for families, uh, I often counsel regarding the swap approach. One soda with a one water bottle, one chips packet with a fruit and a fast food uh, meal, a takeout or outside restaurant food to a home-cooked meal. And cooking together as a family, sitting and eating together as a family, and the five to one more approach is is an excellent framework, uh, which is easy for families to remember. Uh, five kinds of fruits and vegetables per day, less than two hours of screen time, at least one hour of physical activity, and no sugary drinks. So emphasize progress and not perfection. Even small changes reduce the risk. Very well said. Uh, there is a saying that. Uh... The families who eat together, and if I add uh, families who eat together, the home cooked food they stays together, and then especially it can help them fight the the obesity or the the bad effects of ultra processed foods. You have you you mentioned that you have implemented these ideas in practice. This is not easy. Times are limited, and then talking about all those things, you have done that. Uh, do you have some success stories you want to uh, share with our audience? You know how and where other pediatrician or family physician can uh, can start. Yes, absolutely. Um, I've been doing this for a few years now, and my first successful treatment story is a 14-year-old girl who now lost about 60 pounds, which is 35 to 40% of her original weight. She's down from 44 BMI to 32 with medication, this personalized nutritional counseling and exercise, and she's, she continues to follow with me. And there's recently a nine-year-old girl who um, also lost a considerable amount of weight with this personalized counseling. Uh, with my experiences, what I, what I would like to tell the providers, especially primary care providers, whether it's pediatricians, any, any pediatric providers, is it is possible to get these changes um, in the real world setting. And yes, it is possible to treat pediatric obesity in primary care with empathy and consistency. Um, I always encourage clinicians and my colleagues to start with brief practical conversations, even if it's a two minute per visit, uh, can make a lot of difference. Um, UPF reduction isn't about perfection. It's about progress, empowerment, and protecting children's future. There is something called practice paradox where you want to do so much, but you have limited amount of time. And it's a 15 minute conundrum that most practicing uh, providers know in 15 minutes, you're expected to do a lot. You have to address the sick visit, or if it's a well child visit, their refills, their concerns, and counsel them on pediatric obesity and nutrition. So one small step at a time towards a big leap. Great insights. And you've given quite a few areas to explore, actually. We need to bring you back. Um, as we, you know, those are, the insights are phenomenal. Thank you for leading this important work, um, uh, not just only for your practice, but I'm hoping that the rest of the country and others uh, outside can be benefited as well. Uh, this is translating complex science into practical steps uh, for families. That's uh, that's where the patients and uh, the pediatric patients and families are going to be benefited. This has been very inspiring. Uh, any final message for our viewers, especially those who are not in medicine uh, in layman's terms? Yes, if we can help families recognize what are ultra processed foods and make these small sustainable swaps, we can reshape the health trajectories of our future generations. That is very, very succinct. Thank you so much, Dr. Chamurti, for being here today. Uh, we definitely bring, have to bring you back on other topics. Keep up the good work. 
And for those our viewers who are uh, uh, looking at it, please like and subscribe and share. And we'll be happy to share. If you send a comment, we'll be happy to share the publication, which is out and published now. Uh, really appreciate your time uh, today, Dr. Chamarthi. Thank you so much for having me, Dr. Kripchev.